Hello everybody. Hello. I'm here to celebrate my 100,000 subscribers milestone. Yeah. Um wow. I'm doing this live because I thought it would be a better idea, a much better idea to celebrate it with the fans here in the chat. And uh, I'm pretty excited. I didn't know I was going to be this excited. Uh, I thought it was going to be like, eh, I reached 100,000 subscribers in, in a website like this. So, um, yeah. Uh, I thought it was going to be like, eh, yeah, I'll just do a post in the community section and that's it. But now I had to come here and do it live. What better way there is to celebrate it with the actual subscribers, with the people that made it possible. So, uh, first and foremost, thank you very much for being a fan some of you have been a fan for a few days maybe a few weeks maybe a few months maybe a few years or hell maybe throughout the uh, 10 to 15 year career that I have on this website so um, I'm pretty happy <laughs> and I, I honestly can't believe it I thought YouTube will do the impossible to prevent me from reaching this number it kind of did last year, uh, last year was pretty bad in terms of subscribers and this year was no different so I was like man I'm never gonna reach the number or they're gonna sabotage it or do something to prevent it but no they didn't do anything, they couldn't do it, they couldn't prevent anything and now I'm here and I made it. Yeah! <laughs> 100,000 subscribers everybody and up on my way to 100,100. Ah <laughs> oh, man, is YouTube sending me the plague? Maybe, I don't know, I haven't received a single message. You know, I haven't seen anything on my desk, on my uh, analytics, on my studio dashboard, or my own dashboard here on YouTube. I haven't said, I haven't received anything, not even a simple email saying, congratulations, you've reached 100,000 subscribers. Nope, maybe they're waiting to, I don't know, do an actual count of uh, real people subscribe to my channel uh, maybe they need to do something like to check it out and make sure it's real I don't know maybe they need to do something or they probably don't give a rat's ass uh, but yeah the website hasn't said anything to me anything at all uh, the plague I have no idea and if they send it through uh, USPS which is the um, USPS is gonna give it to the Mexican Postal Service, and that's bad news. Might get lost. Uh, but if they do that, yeah, it's gonna take a few months to arrive the plague. But I'll show you. Once I get it, I'll show it off on, uh, on one of these Q&As. But for now, let's just do the uh, celebration of my stream. The celebration of my stream. The celebration of my 100,000 subscribers. And uh, thanks a bunch, everybody. <laughs> I could never have done this without you. There's a lot of people out there who watch this channel. And there's a lot of people right now watching this stream. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And for the people who actually took it seriously and thought, oh, it's a good idea to subscribe to this channel to help it grow. Thank you. Thank you very goddamn much. Thanks, everybody. We're listening to, of course, Sunshine Coastline on a really high volume. <laughs> uh, because, I don't know, I, I was going to choose a Chrono Cross theme, but apparently there's this company uh, sending copyright claims galore to YouTubers because of the Chrono Cross soundtrack, so... Yeah. Next tone. Go fuck yourselves, assholes. Really. Anyway, so I, what better song than the classic Sunshine Coastline? So it's, it's, a, it's a really exciting theme, a really exciting song to celebrate something, right? So, yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, what good memories. By the way, uh, I think it's about time I announce it too, that about in a month and a half, I'll be 15 years old on YouTube. Not really as a content creator, in fact, I think I'm gonna be 10 years old as, a con as an actual content creator. But here on YouTube, uploading videos, you know, my, my oldest video dates all the way back to April 22 of 2009. So in, on April 22 this year, I'll be 15 years on YouTube. And there will also be a very special live stream. Very different from this one. It's going to be like a really big special video live. So it's going to be in about a month and a half from now. Don't miss it. 
But for now, 100,000 subscribers. I gotta say it, man. God damn it. Fuck yeah! Alright. Song's about to end. Let's let it end. I mean, it's such an awesome song, man. I can't believe they totally... I mean, they used it for a, a beach theme, like a small overworld theme. Feels kind of wasted, because it's such a badass, bonkers theme that... I mean, it's ridiculously good. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much for being a fan. And now I'll begin with some goddamn questions. If you can uh, make these questions about my YouTube career, maybe, if you want to ask anything about my YouTube career or my videos or my milestone, something like that, let's try to make this thematic. But of course, you know, if you want to ask something random about whatever, uh, that that's uh, that's an option too. So, bang, there's the uh, media player. How do you like my images? This one right here, this one right here is real. <laughs> and the Fate Stay Night poster is back. <laughs> and everything else is just added images. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, uh, this is Knights of Azure 2, the bride's room. Oh, man. There we go. Can you hear it? Yes, you can. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a bunch. On to your goddamn questions. Uh, thank you for your comments. If you asked something before and I didn't get it, and I didn't read it, re-ask it. Some random questions here about, uh, yeah, YouTube sending the plague. Akira Toriyama passed away, I'm pretty sure all of you know, that's a big name. Unlike when Yoshitaka Murayama died, uh, I felt like I needed to do a video because I figured a lot of people wouldn't notice. I mean, after all, he's not that big of a creator, of an artist, of a celebrity. He's not even a celebrity, but Akira Toriyama, the creator of uh, Dragon Ball Z, wow, that's some harsh news. Uh, yeah, he passed away a couple of days ago. Well, he passed away on March 1 and um, apparently he died of some kind of brain something. I read something kind of confusing, some, uh, some kind of illness. I don't even, I didn't even know it existed, but uh, it does and he took his life, 68 years old. This is the guy who was the career of Dragon Ball uh, and it hit me pretty hard because uh, this is the guy who created one of my favorite anime shows of all time and the best anime show ever that I grew up with. It was my life and I liked it way more than Saint Seiya, way more than any other cartoon. And you're telling me this guy died at 68 years old on March 1. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking news. He was also the artist of uh, Chrono Trigger as you may already know, and also the artist of every single Dragon Quest game in existence. Wow. Uh, long live his legacy, of course, and his memory will live on forever. No one will ever forget that guy. Every time, I mean, Goku, Goku is one of the most recognizable cartoon characters in the entire world, okay? Even my parents know who Goku is. Everybody knows who Goku is, he's just as famous as Mario, right? I mean, everybody knows this guy. Goku, I, I'd say he's one of the five most recognizable cartoon characters of all time in the entire world. And the creator of this character, this beloved iconic character and this beloved iconic series has passed away. And that's just awful, but... Uh, Everybody dies at some point. What breaks my heart is that he died so young. That's, uh, yeah, destiny took his, his life away from us at such a young age. But anyway, uh, long live Akira Toriyama in his work, man. I don't know what's gonna happen with, uh, with Dragon Ball. Uh, I'm more worried about Dragon Quest. 
I mean, I don't know if Square Enix worked on Dragon Quest XII, Flames of Hope, I think that's the subtitle. subtitle. I have no idea if Akira Toriyama did something before he died, but if he didn't, then chances are this game is gonna be like completely different now. And um, he died before he released his final game, Sandland, based on his book, his own book, Sandland. It's an action RPG releasing a couple of days after a Uden Chronicle. I mean, what a horrible coincidence, right? Both creators died before their last masterpiece, before the last game comes out, like a few days apart. A Uden Chronicle April 23. Sandland April 26, I think, and they, they died right before the game was released. At least they completed the game. They died doing what they loved the most, video games. My god, Kira Toriyama, he will definitely be missed. <laughs> Those pictures kind of remind me of an advertisement on web <laughs> They look like ads. I'm promoting Chrono Cross and Persona 3 and my 100,000 subscribers here. Yeah. <laughs> and my books here. I'm also advertising my books. You can see Chrono Cross right here, down there. There's my uh, famous and also infamous Quistis figure, my Fate Stay Night poster. Can you see Valkyrie Profile 2 down there? Can you see the Persona 3 Limited Edition? <laughs> On the PlayStation 5 back there. Can you see my Amiibos? I don't really collect Amiibos. Can you see the the PlayStation fan is back? Not it's not on right now, but it's back, it's there, right next to the Seven Shadows banner. And below the PlayStation 5 box, maybe you can see my limited edition of Girl Lancer Heritage of War. So I pretty much added uh, some of my all-time favorite video games. <laughs> like uh, my, my top three is Chrono Cross, Valkyrie Profile, and Girl Lancer. Anyway, somebody, somebody made a donation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, every anybody. Thanks a bunch, man. I was busy uh, doing my speech on Akira Toriyama, but thanks a bunch, my for my for the donation. I appreciate it. He says you are my number one favorite YouTube channel. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, where did you get that poster of Kid? <laughs> it's not a poster. It's just an image that I added there. It kind of looks like a poster there, right? <laughs> It's just funny. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Will you not cut your beard until 100... <laughs> I'll cut it probably soon. Not right now. Not right now. I'm still uh, aging it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be there for a bit more. But I'll cut it off, you know. I'm starting to get tired of it. And he, uh, we're entering uh, a heat season. E winter usually ends on March 21, right? For a lot of places in the world, not in where, not where I live. Winter doesn't really exist here. It ended up like a month ago. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna be like uh, a pain in the butt. Cell FK says congrats on 100,000 subscribers, Eric. Thanks a bunch, man. A question regarding the channel itself. Do you have any thoughts about making more types of videos? Something like RPG series lower videos? I don't know right now, I've been thinking about this heavily since last year that I... Well, I've been trying different things and different series from last year. Some of them have succeeded, some some, some ideas have succeeded, uh, some others have failed. Unfortunately, uh, Hidden Gem or Hidden Trash uh, kind of failed. Super Obscure RPG Gems also failed recently, but the last video was a failure. It broke my fucking heart. I know it was a bit of bad timing because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out and it was just bad timing, but I get the feeling there just wasn't a lot of interest in a video that's kind of focused on indie RPGs from all over the world. I thought it would be more exciting for people to watch, but people just didn't, most people, I'm not saying you, uh, most people didn't give a shit about the video and it failed and it broke my heart, so that's another series that probably won't continue in this channel. Uh, that's YouTube nowadays, man. A lot of ideas and a lot of uh, videos used to work uh, back in the day when I started, you know, 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Those five, six years were like the golden age for creativity on YouTube. But then COVID-19 happened and 
YouTube became this website that started swarming with uh, YouTube channels of everything, not just gaming channels. You know, there used to be, I don't know, a big, uh, uh, well, a small but also kind of big concentrated bunch of uh, YouTube channels dedicated to one topic or to something, you know, and that after COVID like exploded. Like how many JRPG channels are there nowadays? It's just insane. We've talked about this before. How every so often, you know, we get on our feeds. I'm pretty sure you get them too. I get them all the time. Like from random channels that I had never seen before. And almost every day is like a new channel from a new video from a new channel. And the generic top tens, you know, the best PSP JRPGs. All these new YouTube channels, you know, ripping everybody off. Uh, like I've seen already someone saying, someone doing videos about JRPGs that surpass their expectations, right? Or hidden gems on every console, you know. This is something that's been going on for years, but it feels like way, way bigger nowadays. And I've been thinking since last year that, oh my god, I gotta do something because if I continue doing the same, you know, people... And well, I have continued doing the same already, uh, besides including uh, different ideas and stuff like that. But... Um, and of course, since last year, I've seen uh, several of my videos failed miserably because they are ideas, the type of ideas that I used to do back in the day before all of this uh, plague of YouTube JRPG channels uh, exploded in the past couple of years. So I don't think it's a good idea for me to continue making certain types of videos or at least don't make it often. Don't make them often. Just every now and then my usual... Uh, idea top 10 that I used to do in the past but it's time to take the channel not into a different direction but more like keep trying different things and whatever works stays and whatever doesn't work is sadly going to go away I know you guys are big fans of some series but if something doesn't work you know as much as I like hate to compare myself with uh, JRPG series but how many JRPG series uh, we saw dying before We've seen a lot of JRPG series die because they just don't work anymore. And companies were like, well, Wild Arms doesn't work anymore, so it's over. Shadow Hearts doesn't work anymore, it's over. So it's not just video games, it's everything. So some videos are not gonna are gonna go away, while others that were successful will remain, will prevail. And some new ideas will always be crafted. Yeah, I feel like in this day and age, you need to constantly reinvent yourself, so it's not just my plans of uh, 2024 and or my plans of uh, reaching 100,000 subscribers. No, man, this is something that I gotta. I have to constantly reinvent myself and create new ideas and new videos and stuff like that. So, in a sense, nothing's gonna change. But at the same time, everything is going to change. But everything is going to keep changing constantly until I reach a point where I feel comfortable doing the same and people like it and I succeed and I can make a decent living out of it, right? So, um, new ideas for videos, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I won't stop creating, bringing uh, new stuff to the table. Uh, some things that are like, even though they are considered as generic nowadays, they will kind of continue in my channel, just not on a regular basis. But they, I mean, I can't just completely 100% stop doing certain types of videos, right? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense for me. But also, you know, um, I also need to, like, address this issue and come up with something that people won't rip off easily, maybe. Something like that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, thanks for the question, man. The JRPG space on YouTube is definitely very saturated with the types of content channels upload. Yeah, it's the same, you know, back in 2010, 2011, there used to be a few channels that used to do unboxing videos for example and that you know that started trending back day back back then and it became like something huge and everybody and their mom started doing it i've done unboxing videos and in, in the past and then pickups videos and then video game hunting like going to stores retro stores and all that jazz reviews uh funny reviews like uh a like angry video game nerd top tens of whatever you know it's always the same someone throws something up there original and someone else or that someone or someone else makes it trend and then everybody follows you know it's the history of entertainment in humanity forever you know even classic music i bet there were about there were just a few a few small of classic composers 
all the way back in the day, <laughs> centuries ago, and then wow, <laughs> right? I mean, they were trending, they were successful, and tons of others started doing the same. Very talented, most of them, but yeah. I'm not saying, one thing I want to clarify is uh, all of these new channels that are doing uh, JRPG Top 10s, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad. I haven't watched a single one of their videos. Maybe they're great videos to watch. I have no idea, right? I'm not criticizing their quality or how good or bad they are or how good uh, of, re of a reviewer they are. I have no idea. All I'm saying is that they are creating the same type of content uh, YouTubers like me have created for the past several years. And there's way too many. But hell, you know, some of these people can be, you know, much better than me. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thank you for your comments, everybody. Thanks a bunch for the support. I wouldn't be here and I would never reach this, never have reached this number if not for your support. Uh, there's been a couple of times in uh, the past couple of years where I really thought, and I mean it, like I really thought that was it for me. I was like, man, either I quit YouTube or I start using the website as some kind of, I don't know, secondary... Uh, thing to do in my life like do something else for a living you know and maintain the channel just to, just do the bare minimum you know there were a couple of occasions in the past couple of years where i was like man man that's where i'm going right uh but it didn't happen because for some reason a lot of my videos were still not a lot of them but some videos were still kind of successful and you are here and you're always here hanging out in the q a's and you gave me motivation support and yeah i mean that was awesome and now I'm here, and oh, onward, from now on, man, from here on out, onwards, <laughs> onwards, yeah, let's keep it up, man, this ain't over, it's far from over, I'm still here. Someone's asking, are you, uh... Are you doing any more interviews in the near future? I'd love to, man, but I've talked about this before. Uh, and I've said that I would love to interview a bunch of developers, man. But 9 out of 10, no, scratch that, like 99 out of 100 don't speak English. And they need some kind of translator. And the translator usually charges money. So someone's got to pay for that. And I'm not gonna pay for that, you know, because it's not like the guy's gonna say, oh yeah, just give me $20 and I'll translate the interview. No, man, I mean, it's not gonna happen. So I'd love to interview uh, developers, man. Love to interview guys like Yasunori Mitsuda, Masato Kato, Tetsuya Takahashi, George Kamitani, you know. Man, but I mean, they don't speak English. So it's impossible. And sometimes the, the more famous they are, the harder it gets to interview them, right? Some of them will probably look at my channel and say, oh, he's got a 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, I'll do the interview. But others will be like, mm, you're too small for me, man. <laughs> Grow a bigger audience. I don't know. I have no idea, man. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to uh, interview them and do videos about that. But I don't think it's possible right now. <laughs> Your non? My non-straight brother? Non-straight brother? <laughs> Oh my god, don't say that to me, man. <laughs> $10, no way, man. No, I'm a, I'm a girl's guy. I'm straight. <laughs> I'd love a girl to rub my beard. Not a guy. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Skycatcher, Dawn. I'm seeing some of the usual guys here. Uh, thanks for joining. Skycatcher Gaming, yeah. I saw Cell before. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of you. Hong Luong, Gaming G, An Anthony N. Nash. I know a lot of you. You guys are the, have become like the usual suspects here on the, on the Q and A's. Kevin Lewis, of course. Uh, Said Iroth. <laughs> yeah, Sadrith or Sadrith, Robin Wan. Every every anybody. Yeah, old fan. Who else? Uh, Roslan R. P. Gacha. <laughs> Go! <laughs> yeah, oh man. Uh, some uh, film, X films. Mystery Kid. I know a lot of you. The Autistic Fanboy 2002. 
Some others, you know, I can't recognize you. I don't know. Uh, you probably knew or you don't talk too often or I haven't memorized your names. Michael Thornton, of course. In vain. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Joshua Dilly. Thanks a bunch, man. Paradigm. Oh, man. Joshua Lavinge. Is that because of Avril Lavinge or is that your actual last name? <laughs> wow, it's music. Too epic, right? Uh, Ahmad Al Shafi, of course. Uh, yeah, Anubis the Re Anubis the Red. Anubis, that's that's a demon from Shin Megami Tensei, right? <laughs> Praetor, of course. Yeah. Uh, who else? Still alive? Holy shit! I can't believe I know so many of you, man. Because <laughs> we've been doing these Q and A's for like four, three, four years. I remember when I was still living in Canada, I couldn't do them as often. I was like, when I was living in Canada, I only did like three or four, maybe. I remember. It wasn't until I got back, back to Mexico, that I started doing the Q&As more often. And eventually, it was like every two Sundays. And then eventually, every week. Yeah. Ashura, Twilight Dragon. Whole tw Twilight Dragon 3, I mean, come on, yeah. Uh, Susanu. You don't, you're, you're not here very often, man. <laughs> Oscar Ulloa, of course. Oh man, <laughs> Oli, uh, I, I, I'm missing some people. Like where's Sora? Sora isn't here. It's like Clone Cat, where is she? Uh, where's Queen Violet? <laughs> yeah. Where's Where's Glenn? Did you leave, Glenn? I mean, I Skycatcher Gaming was here. Don Don Vampe, where Where are you, man? Keys. Keys, of course, Keys there. Uh, Dustin Board. Oh man, thanks a bunch, Joshua. <laughs> Senpai, notice me? I'm not Senpai, man. Now nah, I'm still playing Persona 3 Reload, and I, I'm like, whenever the characters refer to my character as Senpai, they call me Senpai. I was like, ah, okay, Senpai, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you pre ordering Stalin versus Martians <laughs> Part 2? <laughs> That's never gonna be, man. That game, I can't believe it, man. That was a really fun video to do. I mean, I knew it wasn't gonna be that successful because it's a 40 long minute video. And guess what? I have some extra footage from the games that were on between uh, 6 Metacritic and 6.5. So the original Metacritic video was gonna be like an hour long. But I thought it was, it was gonna be too long. I said, man, no, if it's one hour long, most people are not gonna watch this. So let's just wrap it to 40. And besides, the point of the video was to criticize or to disagree or agree or disagree with some of the worst JRPGs according to Metacritic and I get the feeling that everything above 6 or 61, 62, you know, it's kind of decent at least, maybe mediocre but not necessarily bad or worst. So it was a good time to end the video, I was like, mm, I'm just gonna uh, wrap things up on, on the last 5.9 uh, Metacritic Metascore JRPG, so yeah. And it still ended up being 40 minutes long, where uh, my original plan was to make it like 20-something minutes long. But there, there was so much to say about some JRPGs in there. Uh, a lot of disagreements and a lot of agreements on my behalf. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you agreed and disagreed with some scores in there. It's a fun website to pick on. Maybe I'll do the same with IGN one of these days. Uh, it's a fun video to do. Not a lot of views, not a lot of money, but it's so fun to do, right? I mean, yeah. So, uh, it's a pretty fun game, a, a video, and the funniest thing about it was that, that there were a lot of games that were like, like, Stalin versus Martians, like, what the hell is this, man? Like, all those games that were like, seduce me, and that's considered as a real-time strategy game? A strategy game called seduce me? Like, oh my god, that was gold, man. That was fucking gold. And I... I need to do something like that again. Not too often, you know, but I'll do something about IGN or something like that. Uh, because there's so mu there's so many funny titles in there. I, I was thinking doing uh, like the opposite, maybe uh, the best GRPGs according to Metacritic. But I get the feeling uh, we're not going to find anything funny in there. Or maybe something, so maybe, maybe just a few GRPGs are like, get the hell, this is a 9 on Metacritic, this game? Oh my god, you're right. But... 
uh, all the funniest hell titles and games, you know, are on the worst of the lowest scores. Anyway, so I have this extra footage. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I'll upload it. I don't know. It's there waiting to be edited. So I'll see what I can do. Uh, Mr. Face, thanks a bunch, man. Thank you very much for your best wishes, everybody. Uh, Ryan, nice to see you, man. You hear about Akira Toriyama? Yeah, I just talked about it about 15 minutes ago. You missed it. Long live Akira Toriyama. I kind of want to put an image of him. But then a lot of people are going to be asking about him. But, but if I put the image, then people will say, oh, he knows. Yeah, right, let's put an image in there. Or no, nah. I mean, I'm a big, I was a big fucking fan of Dragon Ball when I was a little kid. Uh, as much I respect the guy, this, this stream is about my 100,000 subs subscribers. It'll feel weird to keep coming back uh, with the Akira Toriyama uh, topic over and over again. I don't know. So rest in peace. Best wishes to his family and friends. Uh, yeah, another another big fucking name, big influence uh, is gone. Anyway, such an awesome dedicated fan base you have. I do. I was saying earlier that uh, about two times I really considered like not quitting YouTube, but like. Uh, doing something entirely different and just do the bare minimum and just go do something else with my life uh, But yeah, this is the, the fans are the ones that kept this channel alive. So um, thank you Thank you very much for that everybody. I'll be thanking you throughout the video This is just not this stream is not just to celebrate my achievement is to celebrate my How grateful I am celebrate you guys for being here and for not saying, oh, Eric Landon doesn't like Earthbound, fuck this guy, dislike and unsubscribe. <laughs> Eric Landon doesn't do politics, he hates politics and criticizes politics. Oh man, he, he's not a left wing, he's not a right wing, fuck you Eric, dislike and unsubscribe. Oh, Eric Landon loves Chrono Cross and that game sucks, D dislike and unsubscribe. Oh, Eric Landon just, you know, he, he can't handle... Action RPGs on hard mode? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, he is not be the biggest diehard Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne fan. Uh, he criticizes Atlas West, Atlas USA, fuck air. So, yeah, you get the idea. Thank you for not being that piece of shit. <laughs> uh, top 10 GRPs Akira was involved. You know, when I made the... the, uh, the Yoshitaka Murayama video, I kind of feel I kind of feel weird, like I'm capitalizing on someone's death. I made the video with the intention of telling the world, telling my fans, because I, I got the feeling that not a lot of people will pay attention to that. Uh, I think people's attention nowadays tends to go to, to every, anything that's trending. Uh, and we got these big releases in the middle, like a Persona 3 Reload, Jakusa Like a Dragon 2, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And I, I feel like Yoshitaka Murayama's death got crushed, didn't get a lot of attention. So that's why, that's why I made the video, but I didn't do a video for Akira Toriyama. One, because he died, like, we heard about it on Thursday night. And I already had my Unicorn Overlord review, and I was like, man, I still uploaded it. And he was thankfully successful, but I was like, that was a big risk, man, I wasn't going to do the video. I was like, man... Uh, maybe one day of silence and I'll upload the video until later, I don't know, but I, I took a risk and I did it, but I feel like <laughs> making a video about Akira Toriyama right now, that would be like capitalizing on his death, and I just, I don't know, man, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, it feels weird, it's not a bad idea to do, but that's, that, will, that, that will be like doing something out of respect, but also it will be like capitalizing on his death. And taking advantage because his death is trending. I don't know, man. I feel like we are doing. I'm not gonna do anything. If I was a, a really a, like a really diehard fan, maybe I will do something. But no, I was a big fan of Dragon Ball. But this channel is about RPGs. People don't care about anything that's not RPG related. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so uh, some people have have grown up their JRPG backlog because of me. Yeah, so I'm to blame, huh? <laughs> I'm to blame for the fact that your a lot of people's backlog has increased and it'll be there forever and it's become infinite. 
I'm telling you guys, you should emulate. Don't buy every single GRPG I recommend. I'm always telling you, maybe I should say this more often in the videos themselves, right? Instead of just saying, ah, oh, this game is strongly recommended, definitely check it out. Add an extra sentence at the end, like, but right now, this game is not uh, cheap. It's still freaking expensive. Wait for the price to drop. And there. <laughs> maybe I should start doing that. I subscribed when there were still about 8,000 subscribers. Wow, that was all the way back in 2018. Because I clearly remember celebrating my 10,000 10, subscribers achievement on December of 2018. And I did this dumb video imitating the angry video game nerd. And it was pretty much a, a thank you intro dressed as James Rolfe. And then like a small compilation of my rage quit videos or my angry videos, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> it was fun to do, but that was my 10,000 subscriber celebration special. Uh, man, I can't believe so much time has passed since there. And I can't believe I have fans from that era that are still watching my videos, <laughs> my channel. So thanks, man. Do you have a Discord? Nope. I have no social media. I have a blog. If you look at the description of this stream right now, you will find all of my websites, all of them. My Twitch, my Rumble, my blog, which was recently revived. My blog's been there since 2017, actually. Uh, and I recently revived it, and I've been posting some stuff in there, and I will continue to post uh, things in there. Uh, the blog isn't monetized. I asked for the monetization, but of course they told me to go fuck myself. They sent a freaking generic message saying, oh, your content is like, it's considered as garbage content. Because if you go and read what I said in there, yeah, I probably offended the peep, the person who reviewed my my blog. So yeah, it isn't monetized, so you're not gonna see ads <laughs> in my blog. <laughs> uh, yeah, and my Twitch channel, which is currently kind of dead again, but I'll revive it. I will. It's just I recently came back to streaming on YouTube here. I've been doing some streams. I did a couple of them: Redemption Reapers and Fire Emblem Engage, and I will continue to do them. About fucking time I came back, right? <laughs> I wanted to come back on Twitch, but nobody followed there. It was only like, like 10 people followed me there. And everybody was saying like, oh, come back to YouTube. It's not that fun to stream on YouTube because you gotta constantly worry about copyright claims. And uh, the revenue, when it comes to videos, it's more transparent than on streams. Streams, revenue you get on streams, it's so convoluted and uh, yeah not transparent <laughs> at all so it's confusing but yeah the copyright claims are the ones the primary reason one of the biggest reasons why I quit streaming on YouTube but you know you can donate during those streams <laughs> and yeah I'm back so yeah no really like Twitter Facebook I have no social media I haven't played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, just the demo. Thank you, Still Alive. Is it true that Dragon Ball Z and Goku are huge in Mexico? Freaking huge, man. I mean, Dragon Ball Z is big everywhere, but I heard it's big in Mexico in particular. Yes, it's completely 100% true. It's freaking huge here in Mexico. There's uh, wow, there are millions, and I mean millions of fans. Like I said, you know, even people who aren't fans of uh, Dragon Ball Z or aren't even fans of cartoons or anime series at all, you know, like my parents, for example, they know very well who Goku is and, and what Dragon Ball is, right? So yeah, it's freaking fan huge here. I don't know what my country is gonna do about Akira Toriyama's death, but. Hopefully they'll do something. The guy who used to voice Goku here in Spanish, Mario Castañeda, he's from Mexico and he went to Akira's funeral. Uh, yeah, great voice actor. Thank you, 111 Alex G. Have you talked about Breath of Thunder yet? I don't know what that is, so I haven't. Mexican cartels are holding a week of peace like that's oh my god fuck those guys 
Oh my god, really? Shit. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z is a second religion. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z is huge in Latin America. Huge. Not just in Mexico. Or in the entirety of Latin America. Or in the entire continent of America. Maybe not in Canada. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I have no idea. But yeah, I'm pretty sure DBZ is like really huge in the entire continent of America. <laughs> Thank you, uh, HLE. Is that an Aegis? No, it's not. An Aegis uh, um, thumbnail, I mean, profile pic. It's not right. I was thinking of doing a poll right now, but I, I'm not sure what kind of poll should I do. Can be Dragon Ball related. Did you guys play Unicorn Overlord? What kind of... <laughs> This music, <laughs> you can barely hear it. There. That's uh, the main theme of Grow Lancer 5, also known as Heritage of War. The real name is Grow Lancer Generations, but they didn't do that name here in North America when they localized it because Working Designs called the compilation of Grow Lancer 2 and 3 as Generations, so it would have been confusing. But yeah, Grow Lancer 5, main theme, beautiful. Amazing soundtrack. That's a masterpiece. It needs to come back in some kind of remaster. Oh, and this is from Monarch. <laughs> the game nobody likes. Oh, come on. Have a love-hate relationship with Monarch. It's one of those games. Love-hate relationship is just ridiculous. How the game was... Had everything to be awesome and nope. They had to ruin it. Uh, Matt here. Thanks a bunch, Matt. Matt. Miami. Uh, in in dreams. Hong Luong. Unicorn Overlord. Uh, Vanilla Wear won't let Atlas release it on PC. Oh, you're a PC master race guy? <laughs> Come on, man. Get yourself a console. Get yourself a console. Do uh, PS4 at least. And it's there. It looks great. I don't know if you watched, you guys watched my review, uh, many, most people didn't notice probably, but I, my entire review showed footage from both versions, PS5 and Switch, and you can clearly see, okay, not clearly, you need to watch it on a big TV, if you watch it on your phone, you're not gonna notice, watch on a big screen, on your computer or your TV, watch the review, and you'll see how... Uh, the Switch struggles with resolution, as always, and frame rate. There was a battle, and I watched my own review on my TV just to, just to see the differences. And um, there was a, a, a gameplay footage that I showed near the end of a battle, and that was a Switch version, and the frame dropped. And I made sure to render the video at 1080p 60 frames per second, right? So I don't know, it's just a small trivia about the game and my review. That I was constantly showing gameplay footage from both versions. Uh, yeah, in the Switch version... I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you can, go with the PS4 slash PS5 version. <laughs> but then again, this is a real-time strategy RPG, it doesn't really that matter. I've always said that when it comes to certain games, it does kind of matter the low frame rate on Switch. So I think it's better to play them on the PlayStation 5 or 4. I think this, all, this is also the reason why a lot of developers don't release their games on Switch. Like Grand Blue Fantasy Relink wasn't released on Switch. Maybe it'll come at a later date, but it didn't get a release because playing action RPGs at 30 frames per second, modern action RPGs, uh, especially the ones that are kind of AAA or tri straight up AAA, I don't know, man. I think the, the performance wouldn't 
be very good on Switch. So I, I guess I'm trying to send a message to Nintendo and to release their next fucking console now. <laughs> I mean, it's just the Switch still hot, selling like fucking pancakes like crazy. The Switch, great console, I love it, I'm a big fan. But eventually, you know, a lot of third party support is going to die because developers are going to be like, I don't want to release my game on your console, man, because the performance is going to be, I mean, it's just not going to be great, right? So, yeah, which is also the reason why we've seen a lot of uh, AAA action games, not just RPG action games are not going to be on Switch. Stellar Blade is not going to be on Switch, but that's a PS5 exclusive for now. Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's been four years since the first game came out, it's not on Switch. Rebirth is not going to be on Switch. I get the feeling they're never going to be on Switch. Maybe on Nintendo's Switch 2, the, the next console, so it can handle proper 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second, or 4K at least. But, yeah, man. Uh, I, I really hope uh, Nintendo releases a new console next year. Thanks a lot for your comments. What is this? Oh, man, this is Lost Judgment Breaker. Badass song. Super badass song, man. It's kind of loud, though. Damn. That's really freaking good, isn't it? Lost Judgment, amazing game. Play it. Play Judgment first. You have to, and then Lost Judgment. Both games are dirt cheap nowadays on PS5. PS4 versions are 20 $30 max in most places. In Amazon, they're always kind of on sale. I already got my both versions on PS4. So, yeah, but those games, man, they have strong RPG elements. A lot of people consider them as JRPGs. I don't, because they don't feel like one to me, but they're still, like, stupidly strongly recommended, man. Judgment and Lost Judgment. Wow. They blew me the fuck away, man. The romance in Unicorn Overlord, I guess it's it's not the same as in Fire Emblem, but kinda you can you can position for example you can put guards in towns and you can give them gifts and you can romance the girls in there I think. Uh but it's kinda different from Fire Emblem, not the same, and there's also a lot of conversations between characters. I didn't talk about this in the review. There were so many things that I left out of the review because I didn't want to make the review overwhelming because I, I didn't think it will help uh, the game. I think a lot of people will automatically reject this game merely for being a strategy game. And I don't think they should do that because uh, I've seen very few strategy games in my life that are friendly and open to beginners. You know, it's beginner friendly, right? And I think more people should play this game. This isn't a game for hardcore players, in my opinion. Well, you can make it hardcore if you want to, but I think it's a game everybody should play. And I feel like describing overly describing every single gameplay mechanic in the game will will hurt the review so i left some things out uh and that was one of the things that i left out the romance well it's not really a romance you know it's like this bonding system the game has and you but you need to like walk around uh and reach a certain town because you need to go there to watch a specific scene between two characters right so it's interesting but it's it's not really like in fire emblem it, Yes, if you have the characters in the same group fighting constantly, you know, they develop a bond, right? If that's what you're saying, but you're not going to see these bonds interrupt the battle. Like in Fire Emblem, that you just move someone next to another one and they start a conversation. No, it's different. Anyway, will Dragon Quest XII come to Switch? Probably, but I have no idea what's going to happen now that Akira Toriyama's death. <laughs> Probably going to be delayed till next year. Favorite Final Fantasy game? Final Fantasy IX. Releasing Overlord close to Final Fantasy VII was a bad idea. Yeah, and so was releasing my super obscure RPG Gems Part 3 video. Yeah, that hurt, man. That fucking hurt. And I also think it's the same. Whenever a big, big, big freaking game like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, to release your game around that time, you know, Uni Atlas, Atlas should have waited a bit, a bit more. But then again, it's Atlas. They're kind of their ego is starting to go up through the roofs. 
I mean, have you seen their prices for, I mean, a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, at least here in Mexico, is cheaper, cheaper than any version of Unicorn Overlord. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth right now, it's like 70, no, wait, less, like 60 something dollars. And Unicorn Overlord, like freaking 80. Like, who the fuck do you think you are, Atlus? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> anyway. Benji. I mean, you're a fan of Discussion Gamer too, man. Yeah, we're back. Just released a new video yesterday about the uh, PS5 controversy. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Going back to the topic, uh, it's not a good idea to release your game around. I mean, I, I made a couple of videos called 10 JRPGs that were ruined by other JRPGs. And pretty much the theme of those two videos were, was, was that. Like, do not release your JRPGs <laughs> in around the same time of some of the super ultra famous popular mainstream ones. Don't do that. Any thoughts on why there isn't any consistency to game pricing in Mexico? New game pricing, that is. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And you went through that. Taxes. <laughs> because there's a lot of... Uh, controversial well points of view when it comes to business in Mexico and uh, customs are always trying to take advantage of people holy fucking shit that's uh, thanks a bunch Alex Tokash <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot man holy shit he says congrats on 100,000 subscribers maybe this can help you pick up an overpriced analyst game it's not about helping me man you, you need to understand that you know it's not about the, the message the message that I'm trying to send to people is not oh I don't have any money to buy these games no the message is I don't want to buy them I don't want to support this bullshit right like Atlas and these overpriced games it's not that I don't have money it's that I don't want to pay them or support them right but thanks man I'm still saving the last donation you sent for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink I didn't buy the game because I miraculously got a review code for it so I bought the game and I played it and review it but you bet your ass once it goes down a little bit in price, once the price is reasonable, I'll get it immediately. Same with other games, don't worry, man. Uh, you guys need to know that that most big donations uh, from anybody, I save that money to buy video games. It's not like, mm, I'm going to use those 143, well, that's actually 100 minus the 30% of YouTube keeps. I'm gonna use this $100 to buy myself a nice big fucking steak on a restaurant. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pay my electricity bill with that money. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with your donate. No, man. <laughs> well, sometimes I do, right? But the big donations, I'm like, no, I gotta save this money to buy games. And I usually, I not only use it for uh, physical games, I use it for digital games too. You know, I've, I've a lot of the games that I've covered. Uh, have been digital like pretty much the last super obscure rpg gems video there were a lot of games in there that i only played digital and that i bought with that money so yeah anyway thanks a lot thanks a bunch for the donation man and thank you people for joining going back to matt's que uh, uh, bawa ku question uh yeah the, the overpriced here in mexico is because everything is imported okay we do not have the same relationship with the u.s than that Canada has. There's a much better uh, postal relationship and taxes relationship between Canada and the US than with Mexico. Okay, Mexico, guys are a bunch of fucking assholes, corrupted as fuck, and they always increase the price of everything. Everything. You guys get something on $60, it's gonna be $70 for us Mexicans. I guarantee fucking tea that. Right? So, to answer your question, man, it's just that. It's just taxes. They tax everything because, you know, sometimes they can't afford their freaking planes or their, their jades or yachts, their boats. You know, they need the money to buy more drugs and prostitutes. Oh, shouldn't have said that. I'm going to get demonetized. Those words are banned. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I guess I should use it politically correct. Drugs and fucking whores. God damn it. And then, yeah, you know, it's, it's, that's, that, I hope that answers your question, man. Google takes like 30% of Super Chess, though. Wow, okay, yeah, give him a break, man. Twitch, Twitch gets 50%. Oh, yeah. 
You, you think Google is robbing us? They are. No, uh, Twitch gets 50%, half of what you make. And on top of it all, it charges you taxes. Like if you make $100, they keep $50. So you're left with what? $50 minus taxes. YouTube at least has the decency, the decency to charge taxes, you know, for your final amount, right? So if I get $100, Google keeps 30%, I get $70. And that's it. Taxes included. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to shit on Twitch, right? It's a great platform, but... Jesus, man, 50... I mean, if, 30 per, if you think 30% is bad, because it is, it, Twitch, holy crap. Hey, but yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. People should donate through PayPal or something. Yeah, starting with you, man. <laughs> Provide an example. <laughs> Send something through PayPal right now. My PayPal is in the description. I think it's the first link in the video. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it feels kind of weird, right? To ask people for donations or encourage them. Feels like you're begging for money, uh, but... This is a website that it's oversaturated with YouTube channels. I mean, it's real, even the big channels. I mean, I've seen Metal Jesus. Uh, he didn't used to do this before. And I've seen some of his videos. He started using sponsorship. I think he, he made a video recently, a couple of days ago with uh, Reggie, one of his uh, pickup videos. And he had to interrupt the video to insert his own ad about the company that sponsored the video like when you see the big guns like metal jesus doing sponsorship or i mean james rolf has been doing this for the for years because some of his videos get shadow banned because of all the swearing because swearing is bad here on youtube uh and then there's some um, uh some of his videos have gotten demonetized so what's his solution do sponsorships right so yeah we are struggling people so if you want to support your uh favorite content creators super chats donations patreon stuff like that or you know what's a great way to support your content creators for absolutely free you don't have to pay a single penny you gotta you there's something you need to do there's something you can do to support us just watch our videos and I don't just say click on them watch five seconds and then move on or you skip through them you know like oh click here 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 just what games did it put on the list oh no watch the whole video trust me that helps okay it that sends a message to this stupidly poorly programmed algorithm of YouTube saying oh people are showing interest in the video not just in the title or the thumbnail. They are actually watching through the whole video, right? So what does that mean for YouTube? Oh, more advertisers. Even if you have Adblock Plus, you know, watching through the whole video helps us a lot. And you do not have to pay a single penny. You don't never have to donate if you don't want to. No donations, no PayPal, no Patreon, nothing. Just watch the whole video. Can you do that? I know it's pretty fucking hard nowadays for a lot of people, apparently, but you help us a lot by watching through the whole video, not just five seconds of it or 30 seconds of it. So yeah, now you know. <laughs> See, if you go to my website, my blog right now, I, I remember doing a post, a post like that about six years ago saying that great ways to uh, support this channel, something like that. <laughs> and it was that like, just watch the video, <laughs> watch the video, man. Oh, someone listen to me. Someone sent 50 bucks on uh, PayPal. That was Matt. Thanks a bunch, man. Reading it right now. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you for the donations. Thank you, uh, Gen X Gamer. Thanks a bunch. Gen X. I've always been troubled about the titles these so-called social experts put on us like... I'm allegedly a millennial because I was born in the 80s. But then, oh man, it's gonna be another rant, so let's just move on. <laughs> I mean, I'm a ranter. What do you want me to do? 
I know our, there are people out there who say, oh, I don't like Eric Land on RPG. He just bitches about life <laughs> or everything constantly. Well, that's that was the whole point of my channel. I remember when I did my some of my first videos, my earliest videos were precisely done to bitch about things. <laughs> Why? Because that's my personality, first and foremost. And second, because I grew up, not grew, I mean, I was already, we're already an adult, but most of the first YouTubers that I started watching uh, here on, on the website were ranters. There was nothing but rants. Rants got so popular like about 10, 12 years ago. Obviously, courtesy of uh, the big channels like uh, James Rolfe, like Angry Video Game Nerd. There were others that I didn't watch, like Angry Joe Show, uh, these other... The Irid Gamer. Uh, there were a lot of channels that used to do rants in there that I didn't watch. But I watched others like James Rolfe, like Alpha Omega Scene. Anybody remember that guy? <laughs> He's gone again. He like kind of came back and then went away again. Yeah, Alpha Omega Scene. Channels like that, and they used to do like the rants. And I remember some that are gone that I used to watch just for fun, like uh, Norm's Bar Stool. Oh my god, funniest guy in in YouTube, man. And he was so angry about any everything and anything. <laughs> well, that was YouTube back in 2010, 2011, you know, there was a lot of rants out there. Uh, it was just funny. It was funny as hell, you know, and the whole point was to complain about something and yes, send a message, but also to make people laugh, right? And apparently nowadays it isn't funny anymore because it's offensive. Rants offend YouTube and minorities, right? Let's watch let's play video i watch let's play videos all the time oh those never went away they're still there I'm, I'm still doing them even if it's live i mean what's the difference between one of my two hour long streams than any other regular 15 20 minute long let's play i mean it's basically the same concept so let's play let's plays uh, are still there they haven't died <laughs> man what a weird question man will you eat cereal for dinner what? Oh, all your questions, man. Just keep in mind, you paid money just to ask me that question. Will you eat cereal for dinner? <laughs> That's what these Kellogg's guys said in response to why your cereal has gotten so damn expensive lately. <laughs> oh, man. I eat cereal in the mornings. Like as breakfast. At dinner? Well, here's something, uh, something dumb but funny. You know, there's a big difference between certain countries, like uh, between Mexico and like Canada and the USA. You you guys have like breakfast, lunch, dinner, and sometimes supper, right? For us, it's like different. We're in Mexico. We're used to like breakfast, like early in the morning, and lunch. Not really. That doesn't really exist. Or Unless you want you you are referring to to lunch for the meal we get like at 2 p.m. 3 p.m. around that time most Mexicans eat at that time, but it isn't exactly lunch. That's pretty much our dinner, and then we got we get our supper at night. So most most Mexicans uh, they eat like four or five times a day, but they, uh, there's only like three like main meals: breakfast. Uh, the one in the middle of the day, like, like 2, 3, 4 p.m., right? And that's dinner, I guess. You could call it dinner. And then there's supper at night, like at 7, 8, 9 p.m., you know, that's supper. So, yeah, we I guess we do have a lunch, but nobody considers that, that meal as like a strong meal. No, let's just go in the, in the middle of recess to buy uh, some freaking Doritos, and that's it. That's your lunch. Or uh, something dumb, something small, right? Like kind of imperative. <laughs> yeah. So it's weird. So your question. Uh, oh, what the hell did I do here? Almost fucked it up. I almost turned Nemo propaganda. Thanks for the donation into a moderator. <laughs> Man, congrats, bro. You deserve it. And spirit bomb of love uh, for Toriyama-san. May we never forget the legend. Ne no fucking way. I'm, I'm never forgetting that guy. I grew up with Dragon Ball Z, man. Never forgetting that guy. Man, but god damn, we lost two great people, two great men. 
in such a short period of time. Unbelievable. And so young. That's ridiculous. Anyway, so launch. Yeah, to, to wrap up the launch conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah. We have our dinner, like, at, our afternoon. So, no, I don't eat cereal for dinner. Well, oh, we're fucking long ass speech and explanation just to answer one simple stupid question. <laughs> Where do you live in Mexico? Uh, Guadalajara. The big metropolis of Guadalajara. Big city, overly populated, don't come here, never come here. It's horrible, traffic ruins everything. And people always, tourists always complain about the traffic and about the heat. Do not come here. It's a horrible city. <laughs> Gotta complain about something, right? Anyway, I'm watching all your videos slowly. I watch them while I play. What? No, man, watch the videos. Pay attention to the videos. I don't do videos. Uh, this, this isn't a podcast. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> my videos, my channel isn't a podcast. My videos are supposed to be watched. And paid attention to. Is 68 really that young though? It is. Hey, my mom almost died last year. And she was 68. So yeah, it's fucking young. I did Mexico City, so I got a taste of the traffic myself. Ooh, yeah. When I was in London uh, seven years ago. Holy shit, man. London. London. I'm gonna quote Snatch. The movie right now you know london right bad food worse weathers <laughs> thank you uh gustavo for rejoining the live reviews why is it still called live reviews i changed the name a gazillion times ago and youtube still saying it's called live reviews you're not getting any live reviews if you join my me um, as a member here you're not getting any live reviews that ended up like three years ago what you get is some extra content some streams, some uh, couple of videos that aren't available. Uh, I made a video called um, How I Make My Videos. That's a pretty interesting video. That's exclusive for members. Some streams, especially the ones that are about games that are not RPGs, are pretty much exclusive for members. There was a completely unedited interview I did with the creator of Shadow Hearts. The unedited version, the director's cut version is exclusive for members. So that's what you get for joining, but live reviews, well, there's a couple of reviews that I did live about Earthlock, an indie turn-based RPG, and the God Eater series. Those two were live reviews. I guess that's why YouTube is mistaking the name for that. Mistaking <laughs> the name for that, but yeah, whatever the case, thanks for joining. If you want to join. Anyway, so what was I saying? I forgot. Oh, oh, when I was in London, that, oh man, <laughs> I took a bus from London to Nottingham and I should have arrived in like three hours. No, I did almost like four and a half hours because freaking traffic. That's a problem with every major city in the world. In the world. I was in Toronto. Same. Freaking traffic is unbelievable, man. No matter where you go. All those big cities, you know, the same old... Song and dance. Thanks a bunch. Hooflong! You finally showed up. He says, your channel is GOAT, so congrats on your milestone. Let's go. Let's go, man. Thanks a bunch, man. Uh, you were born in 1985. Sean, yeah, I was. More usual suspects have recently joined. Lord Kaiser, Sean, Sivoreb. Uh, Hope I pronounced that correctly. Sivoreb. Sivoreb. So, uh, yeah, I know all you guys. You guys have been here for years. <laughs> Snow coffee, of course. I need to highlight you guys. I mean, this this celebration is for you too. It's not just for me. I, I wouldn't be here if it, wasn't, if it weren't for you. So, yeah. Come on, there's this guy called Mario One. <laughs> That's a pretty clever name. <laughs> Mario One. Okie dokie too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gustavo gifted 10 Eric Landon RPG memberships. Sean got it. Wiseman got it. Tetra Master. Of course, I know who you are. Uh, was Machin Sachin. I 
probably mispronounced that, sorry about that, but I know who you are. Twilight Dragon R Project. Of course, Kiss. Kiss got a membership? <laughs> Congratulations, Kiss. <laughs> uh, Chell's Dollhouse, honey? Oh, wow. That's a, new, that's a new name. I've never seen it before. But congratulations, Chels Dollhouse. Rodrigo. <laughs> it's Mihao. Mihao! That's awesome. Congrats, guys. <laughs> Hiro. I see Hiro there. Damn. Can't believe there are so many people that... I, I know you guys for, for years. You have been watching for years. I mean, probably some of you joined last year. And started showing up in the Q&A's last year, only recently. But uh, yeah, a lot of you. Uh, oh my god! But I I know some guns that, that, that some usernames that go all the way back to 2018 and 2019. Like Terry, where the hell is Terry? Terry, big Valkyrie profile fan. Where the hell is he? Where's Sora? Can't believe we're, we're, where the fuck is Sora? You know, I mean, we're missing some people here. Einashi? Well, Einashi never fucking shows up. <laughs> Mystery Kid? Oh man, yeah, I know who is. Zero Gaming? Holy oh, shit, man. Yeah, that's you, you're Mexican. Oh yeah, from Querétaro, yeah. <laughs> I know you're from Mexico, man, yeah. More memberships. Uh, Melfi Sky, of course, I know that guy. Fenrir Fire? That's new. Dead, um, some of you changed your usernames. I remember there was this one guy. Uh, in one of my streams from two years ago, and he was like arguing. I was like, who, who the fuck are you, man? Oh, I'm this guy. I changed my username. Oh, it's you. So if you change your name, let me know. Uh, Dead 100 i fi Ragna N, of course. And Seattle Chef. Are you really a Seattle Chef? I like an actual chef from Seattle? That's a big city. Skycatcher Gaming says he finished reading the Revenant Army. I got your message, man. Yeah, hopefully your review will uh, show up soon. <laughs> the first rate and review ever of that book in, in Amazon. I feel like you inspire Redemption Reapers. Ah, nah. But you know what? You know what I did? My book came out in 2014. 2014. 2014. And then all of a sudden, there was this guy called Alejandro González Iñárritu. And this other nobody, nobody knows this guy. Like, what's his, what's his name? Like, Leonardo something? Leonardo DiCaprio? Something like that, you know? He was the protagonist of this movie called The Revenant that came out exactly one year after my book. Just being an ass. A Revenant is a pretty common word. In the USA, but Revenant does not translate as Revenant here in Mexico. It has a different meaning. Well, the meaning is the same, but the, the, the word is different. Uh, but yeah, I influenced the Revenant. Now I'm gonna get a bunch of people in the comments saying, Oh, can't stand this guy. He has such a big ego. He really believes. <laughs> Thank you, Michael P. I know that guy. When a YouTuber is genuine and isn't trying to wallet gaze you, you get popular quick. Really? I always thought it was the other way around. Like a lot, I, see, I feel like a lot of YouTubers uh, from any gaming channel, JRP channels, uh, any type of video game channel, you know, I feel like all they do is chase trends precisely to get more popular, more subscribers and more money. It's true that you get more money that way, but... I don't know, maybe some maybe some YouTubers legitimately, genuinely uh, follow trends because they actually care. You know, I, I, I follow some trends, not too many, uh, just the ones that I really care about. Uh, and sometimes I take advantage of some, of some trends I'm about to in a, an upcoming video. But I always try to chase the trends that I really genuinely uh, are interested in, right? So... Um, and I don't like boasting about being genuine because it brings out a lot of trouble. I, I, I don't think people like honesty on YouTube, most people anymore. But yeah, on the road to a million subscribers. As long as this website, as long as I'm still blacklisted on this website, that's never going to happen. But thanks for your best wishes. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, in all honesty, I wouldn't want to get to one million subscribers. I don't want to sound like a downer, 
but really, man, I wouldn't know what to do if I was that famous. Can you guys imagine a guy like me that being that famous? I will get assassinated, you know? And then the media will say, oh, he killed himself. He was on drugs. He was an alcoholic. Yeah, he committed suicide. Probably, yeah. When in reality, you know, the uh, social justice warriors got so angry because I got so popular, and they came here and killed me. <laughs> I'm, I, I sh we shouldn't be laughing, man. That's what people do. You know, when you get so when when a guy like me gets like really popular, we die. People don't like us. I like I, I've, I've always said this, man. We people don't like honesty. And plus, I have a big fucking mouth. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a freaking loud mouth. I shouldn't be. And trust me. I struggle with that, I've lost relationships because of that, and fans, and I've gotten into uh, a lot of shit in my life because of that, so I try to be better, a better person, but it's just who I am, and I shouldn't be. Exactly, I will get cancelled. Like what happened like two and a half years ago, multiply that by 20, or 30, or 50, even, or 100, you know. <laughs> Hundreds of YouTubers like that, you know, just doing videos trying to discredit me. Anyway, uh, more thank you, Sub, uh, Sub Zero Cybot. I know who you are. I asked you a question about Cybot. Noob Cybot, that's one of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters of all time. I always pick that guy. Rulif was gifted a membership. Okuni, Ani, Ani, Mouse, Anani Mouse, Anini Mouse. I can't pronounce that. Kevin Lewis got a membership. Evolved. Oh, man. Lots of memberships, people. <laughs> you are famous already, man. Nah. Famous? Famous, that's uh, Metal Jesus. That's James Rolfe. That's um, um, the gaming historian. The gaming historian got a, got to a 1 million subscribers last year. That's, that's a crime. That's a crime because he should have gotten there like 10 years ago. Well, well, then again, I think gaming historian's biggest problem. Someone's gonna go and tell him. Eric Landon said this about you. <laughs> uh, well, do that, please. I think he's. Uh, I, I don't think he's a YouTuber. Gaming historian. He shouldn't be on YouTube, man. He should be on fucking Netflix or something. I mean, his content is like. That's not really YouTube content, man. That's extremely professional, and on another level, man. I don't even know why that guy is not... I mean, damn, man. And yeah, million subscribers, that's huge, right? That's awesome for a guy like him. But I think people, YouTubers like Norman, he, I mean, they shouldn't be here on YouTube. He's, this place is just too small for people like him. But anyway, that's famous. <laughs> that's famous, man. Me, I'm just one of, another one of them in the bunch. A road to 101,000 subscribers. Fuck yeah. That seems like a more legitimate goal to pursue. <laughs> what game in 2024 are you excited the most? Oh, somebody finally asked that. A Union Chronicle. Content creators should be careful with who they collaborate with. Some can be treacherous. Right? <laughs> it's No, it's not... Some people aren't that treacherous. More like some people are afraid to be to collaborate or be seen with someone with a reputation like mine like i go out say i go out and say with no filter whatsoever that uh politics suck both sides like you know both the left and both the right i always criticize both of them you know i'm always bitching about censorship um but when you like me <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand why a lot of people don't want to uh, collaborate with me. But you know what? I, I shouldn't be using myself as an example because I closed my social media about a year and a half ago. So I think a lot of people don't collaborate with me because they don't know how to reach out. But I'm pretty sure they don't want to. But yeah, you should be careful. Some people out there, they only give a shit about... Uh, Gaining more subscribers and attention and stuff like that. Anyway, thank you, JCS. I can't join the live stream, but congrats. 
Thanks a bunch, buddy. Thanks a bunch. Uh, the Power Glove documentary was his top quality. I, I heard the gaming historian was working on a... Oh man, I forgot the name. One of the first video games in, in history. From the 70s, I think. Fuck. If you guys are fans of his and you are patrons... I'm not a patron, but he, he posts a lot of things about... He, he hasn't done a video in like 7 months. But because he's been working on a really big video about this, one of the oldest games of all time. Oh man, I can't think of the name of the game. It has a weird... It's about the uh, this, the little space, the little path between Russia and the UN and Alaska, I think. Anyway, someone's gotta know right now. So someone will bring it up. What channels do you watch, recommend, that are less known? I don't really watch a lot of uh, small YouTubers. And to be honest, most of the YouTube uh, content that I watch is not really JRPG related. I don't watch JRPG channels, so I stopped doing that oof, lot, many, many years ago. And uh, But I do watch some video game channels, but some of them are like the big ones, like James Rolfe, uh, Gaming Historian. Uh, um, I used to watch Alpha Magazine. I watch... Um, sometimes I watch Pat DNES Punk. Yeah, G GameSec, of course, GameSec. GameSec is one of my favorite channels. He talks about a bunch of games that I care nothing about and I, that I will never play and I still watch through the whole video. All the way to the dumb skits at the end. I love him. Uh, but yeah. Small YouTube channels. I can mention a few, but they are not video game related. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll mention this guy, but he's not small. He had like 50 something thousand subscribers. I'm happy. I started watching this guy about three and a half years ago. Yeah, around three and a half, maybe four years ago when he had like 10,000 subscribers. I'm glad to see he's grown. Uh, this is a channel called Retro Bird. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. Uh, Retro Bird. He's, uh, he, he makes like one video a week every Friday, uh, great YouTuber, um, yeah, I watch that guy, he's the smallest gaming channel I can think of. Congrats on 100,000 subscribers, guess I'm a part of the road to 150,000 somehow, I wasn't already subscribed. <laughs> uh, thank you, John Galt. You weren't subscribed? Well, you, you subscribed, right? Right now, didn't you? Hoping you did. Bering Straits? The Bering Straits? Uh, no. Uh, I'll look it up for you guys. Thank you, Gustavo. What's ours? <laughs> Argentina? Is that? No, not really, no. Uh, where, where are you from? Ours? Well, thank you for 50 R's. <laughs> I mean, that it's a real mile milestone for an honest channel like yours. Thank you. I think that being from LATAM, you have to make a harder path to success. So you're from LATAM? Oh, wow. Ours. So many countries, so many currencies, so many languages. This world is crazy, huh? Someone knows Retro Bird, Tetra Master, a fellow fan. Retro Bird is that white nerdy guy. <laughs> Like, uh, you choose to describe, like, 50% uh, of YouTubers, man. <laughs> A white nerdy guy, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's one of the many, many, many white nerdy guys on YouTube. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Literally, you two are the underdogs. Me and who else? I'm an underdog? I'm an underdog. Games like also cover arcade classics, so that's a plus. Joe also learned some electronic repair skills. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Retro Bird fans here. That's awesome. <laughs> the thin CRT guy? CRT? I don't know what that is. Oh, I see CRT and I don't know. I changed that and I'm like CTR. Crash Team Racing. Oh, you mean CRT the TVs? Yeah, right? Oh yeah, he's done some videos about uh, uh, CRTs. I know you did a top 10 videos for both genres. 
both genres? What? What? But I don't know how different they were, those two. What are you trying to ask, Cam and Spidey? Not sure I understand your question. But, um... I don't understand. <laughs> Ours. Thank you, Paradise Gamer 13. Another old fan. Uh, Michael P again. Oh, Jir Maninen. I probably mispronounced that. But Jir uh, Maninen, Maninen from Finland. Yeah, I know who you are, man. You've been an old fan. Yeah, oh, man. Emmanuel Joseph Valenzuela. Holy shit. <laughs> all, the, all the guys showed up. Thanks. Bullet Gaming. Damn. <laughs> Aside from making a living from it, what do you like the most about YouTube? Congrats, been a fan for the past four years. Whoa, wow. More memberships. Oh, the sweet life of Dio Brando. Really old fan. You got lucky, man. Congratulations. Chumburrito. <laughs> man, ni luna ni sol. Congratulations, Philly and Jajo Celestino. <laughs> New guys. I've, I I recognize you guys. So, what was the question? Uh, what do I like the most about YouTube? <laughs> Well, I like that there are still a lot of channels that do whatever they want. And even though they do get, like, censored or shadow banned, uh, they're still there. Yeah, I guess that's my answer. One of the things that I like the most about YouTube is that some of my favorite YouTubers that I've been watching for over a decade are still here creating content. I mean, that's awesome. Considering how the website is nowadays, that's all about uh, censorship and politics and political correctness. Uh, I'm surprised to see some of these guys still hanging in there that have been there since 2006, 2008 and are still here creating content. I mean, that's the best thing about this website. Those guys. And what else? Uh, that it's so easy to do certain things, you know. Believe it or not, I, I don't use Spotify. Whenever I listen to music, oh, it's because I download it and have like media players and music players, blah, blah, blah. You know, but a lot of the time when I play my guitar and play along some songs, I always use uh, YouTube playlists, right? So it's it, it, you could say it's my preferred website to listen to music nowadays, because most of the time that I listen to music too is when, when I'm playing the guitar. Thank you, J.A. I know who you are, I've seen you before. Would you marry Keith if it meant you had to kill a Aegis? No. <laughs> no way. No way. Do you watch Dross? Yes, I fucking do, man. I fuck. I wasn't that big of a fan before because he was just doing these dumb videos. Uh, They're entertaining to watch all of these videos about this uh, TikTok person getting famous because of something horrible and strange. Uh, and uh, th that saw some ghosts and so it's fucking bullshit, right? But they're entertaining to watch, right? But then I, I became a fan, like a big fan, when he started saying, fuck you, YouTube. Uh, and attacking the political uh, correctness of the, the website and it's like he does like three videos a week and there's always gonna be one that one video where he trashes cancel culture social justice warriors and the right wing and the left wing and politics and uh, and he's a big guy right i mean how many guy how many youtubers can get away with that in their videos not a lot but he he can because he's one of the biggest youtubers in the planet in latin america uh, at least so yeah, of course I watched that guy. <laughs> oh, the Dro Dross blocks, they died, right? He hasn't done any blocks whatsoever in a long time. Yeah. But yeah, he, he's an example uh, to admire, but not to follow. <laughs> you follow that and, I mean, a YouTuber, small YouTuber like me, I start doing that, I, I, I'm gonna get demonetized like this. I, I'm pr I don't need to remind you that Last year, I made a video called Top 10 Hidden Mature Rated Hidden RPG Gems. Okay, it got demonetized. Oppressively demonetized. If you remember the story, some of you were there, you already know what happened. But yeah, just a quick refresher, it got demonetized. For no reason. No reason. Sometimes I feel like I, I'm under a microscope in this website and someone Someone in YouTube fucking hates me passionately, man. I mean, why would they demonetize that video? I mean, there was, there was no swearing in that video. Sure, I showed some sexiness and maybe some blood, but nothing gorish. 
or like super sexualized or explicit, nothing. No, the video got demonetized. So yeah, big fan of Dross because he can get away with any... Well, he doesn't get away with anything, I mean... Uh, fuck, he's always censoring himself too. Some of his videos get demonetized for mentioning words like suicide, stuff like that, you know. Damn, thank you, Matt Radio. You finally showed up, man. <laughs> anyway, wise man. <laughs> Everything wrong with series? Dark Tigan, never heard. That's that a YouTuber? I made one video called Everything Wrong, and that was Everything Wrong with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Wasn't very successful, though. <laughs> Probably because I ranted my ass off about the game all the time. Uh, what are you talking about? The video, the Hidden Gems video didn't get taken down. It's still there. You're just not gonna see it in your feed. You gotta look it up. You gotta click on my channel and browse through all the videos and go to October of last year, 2023, and you'll see it there. But yeah, it's a video that it's, it's dead. It's not getting any views, not getting any money, nothing. It's just there. Death. YouTube killed it. And I fought. I reached out to Google support and I complained about it and I said, hey, what, why? And they didn't give me any reasons. Like, fuck you, we're not explaining to you why we demonetized the video. Just like that. I have the conversation. Just in case something happens, I, I downloaded the whole conversation I had with this person in chat support. Maybe one of these days I'll post it on my blog. Yeah, seems like a good way to do, to expose these people because I can't believe it, man. Demonetizing videos for no fucking reason. I put a shot of Persona 3 where they shoot themselves and TikTok took my video down. Why am I not surprised? Blaming us again. This is the 80s again, man. The 80s with a bunch of concerned parents attacking musicians. And I'm like, how is it my fault that your 12-year-old kid is buying my CD and listening to my music? I can't control that, but you can. It's just, it's not our fault, man. If you don't watch, if you don't want your kids watching me, because I swear, then you do something about it. I'm not gonna do anything about it. You're not gonna censor me. I'm not gonna censor myself just for your sake. Like if a kid, a little kid, are watching my hidden RPG gems video, mature rated, that's not my problem. Why are we, you know, fixing all the broken dishes, you know, or you paying all the consequences because of your irresponsibility? Anyway, let's not talk about that. More donations on PayPal. Thanks a bunch, people. Let's see. I gotta give him a shout out. Uh, first and foremost, Alex Tokash. <laughs> Are you still taxed on PayPal with foreign taxes? Not uh, Alex. No, I don't get taxed, but PayPal keeps like six percent. So if you just send one hundred, I'm gonna get ninety-four dollars. So it's much better than YouTube, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's much better. Thanks a bunch for the donation, Alex. Uh, and someone sent 30, 30 bucks from Alfred Manalak Jr. <laughs> oh, wow. I haven't seen your username here, man, but I know you're watching. Thanks a bunch for the donation. I'm, I'm getting 28.10. Thanks a bunch, man. Man, thanks for the donations. What? What happened? The music got cut off. What the hell happened? Oh, again? It's like repeating? It reset? The, the music player reset. That's okay. Let's listen to this music right now to calm ourselves down, right? <laughs> like we were, it was just the, the conversation was getting heated because of censorship and, and stuff. Like, Jesus. Oh, man. Let's talk about something else. Top 10 Eric Lennon demonetized videos? No. <laughs> let's talk about something else. Thankfully, I don't think I have 10. Well, well, if you include uh, some of those streams that were demonetized because of one copyright claim because of the song that was playing in the background, oh yeah, I can make a top 10 easily. <laughs> but videos that were like demonetized by YouTube themselves and not because of copyright claims, I don't, I fortunately, very fortunately, I don't have 10. 
Thanks a bunch, uh, Still Alive. What are, in your opinion, the best RPGs that originated on the 3DS, meaning no remasters, remix, or older RPGs on it? Okay, so I did a top 10, pretty popular top 10. It has like, over 100,000 views, uh, miraculously. It's a pretty old video. I think I released it on 2019. It's called Top 10 3DS JRPGs, and in parentheses, no ports, remakes, remasters of anything. Like, they were developed for the 3DS. Okay, and um, some of the best... Uh, in that video, I remember were the Project Cross Zone videos, uh, games. There's two of them. Project Cross Zone 1 and 2 are definitely up there. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse were also there, of course. I think I, I think Apocalypse was my first place, if I'm not mistaken. Apocalypse was developed specifically for the 3DS, so that's, that's my number one. SMT Apocalypse. There were other hidden gems in there, like Lord of Magna. Uh, pretty cool hidden gem, lovely strategy RPG, man. Yeah, unfortunately I can't mention some like Devil Survivor 1 and 2 because they are ports. Radiant Historia, it's a great remaster in there. Yeah, that, that can be. So, yeah. <laughs> go, and, go and watch that top 10, man. 10 JRPGs that were specifically developed for the 3DS. And most of them are still there. I think every single one of them are still there on the 3DS. They haven't been ported or remastered or anything. Well, maybe, no, okay, The Alliance Alive is there. The Alliance Alive is in that video. Because when I made that video, or not, I don't remember, man. But if it is, if Alliance Alive is in there, it makes sense because the game was an exclusive on the 3DS back then. He later got a remaster in PS4 and Switch, but that was like in 2020, I think. I'm happy to see you enjoying this stream. Oh, I am! <laughs> Having a blast. I mean, we're celebrating. Most of the usual suspects showed up. I'm getting a shit ton of donations. <laughs> of course I'm happy. SMT5 finally coming to PlayStation on July or June. Finally, PlayStation, Xbox, PC. Kamen, Kamen Spidey wants to bring back the, uh, the the conversation with the negative connotation that of offends Snowflakes. <laughs> All the SMTs are amazing on 3DS. Every single one of them. 4, Apocalypse, Devil Survivor 1 and 2, Soul Hackers, Strange Journey. Well, I wouldn't call Strange Journey amazing. Story, music, and whatever is amazing, sure, but it's just so tiresome to... I mean, those labyrinths, man, they're so annoying, but it's still a great game. Yeah, all of them are great games. There, there isn't a single bad SMT game on the uh, 3DS. Thanks a bunch, Shin's RPGs. Says, congrats again on 100,000 subscribers to more awesome JRPG content goodness. Awesome. <laughs> I gotta go back to work, enjoy the celebration live stream. Thanks a bunch, man. Thanks for being a fan all these years. Jir Maninen, 5 euros. Thanks, man. Uh, he says, so what game do you think Gem Drops is gonna remaster next? Because after the success of Star Ocean, they are gonna get a new game to remaster for sure. First and foremost, that was not a remaster. That was a full remake. They redid the game from scratch so they could be able to add the new controls and battle mechanics and the new graphics in HD 2D. So it's not really a remaster. It's a remake. I have a video about remakes coming out in a couple of days. Everything is explaining there. But yeah, Gem Drops should definitely remake Tales of Fantasia. In my opinion, that's the first game that should be on their minds. But then again, the HD 2D graphic style belongs to Square Enix. So if they could come up with something similar, for Bandai Namco, that would be awesome. But then again, if Gem Drops only makes Square Enix games, so we gotta pick a Square Enix game, right? Many will say Xenogears. Yeah, Xenogears in HD 2D. Could work. Final Fantasy VI or Chrono Trigger will be far better on HD 2D by Gem Drops. So, but Xenogears, right? But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Final Fantasy VI or Chrono Trigger. Uh, yeah, man, those two definitely. Chrono Trigger. Chrono fucking Trigger, man. That's the next. That's gotta be next for Gem Drops. 
or Breath of Fire 1 and 2, we were just listening to Breath of Fire 1 and 2. Breath of Fire 1 or 2. And or 2. But that's Capcom. If we're sticking to Square Enix, then Chrono Trigger, man. Uh, I just hate parental figures trying to water down art. It's not just parental figures nowadays, man. I've been watching South Park and I'm on season 19 and all season 18 and season 19 is just it was they did those seasons in 2015 when it was just starting all this uh, left wing bullshit it was just beginning man and wow you, I don't know if you guys watch South Park but if you do rewatch some of the older episodes of those seasons and you're gonna be like oh my god can't believe that's what's happening now South Park was so ahead of their time so it's not just parents, man. It's just people, overall people, you know, getting offended with everything. And companies like YouTube are being run by those very same people, unfortunately. Uh, will be nice with H2D remix of uh, Tales of Destiny 1 and 2. Yeah, I agree. All the, tale, all the old Tales games should be remade with that style. Fantasia, Destiny, Destiny 2, and Eternia. That's it, not Symphonia or, Re or Rebirth. Well, maybe Rebirth could work. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Tales of Rebirth is a uh, sought after localization nowadays, a big one. I think that's my biggest one. If there's one Tales game that I want uh, localized, officially localized, is Rebirth. Any idea why the Suicune 1 and 2 Steam port is delayed this much? I think. Konami is just a conspiracy theory that I made up some time ago and I actually see I've actually seen other youtubers making videos about this conspiracy theory so either they they read it somewhere or got it from me or for someone else from someone else but I remember I was saying last year that the, the games were delayed because a Uden Chronicle was delayed that Konami wants to compete against a Uden Chronicle so we got a release date for a Uden Chronicle this year, which is April 23. I'm guessing the remasters of Suikoden are gonna be like in May, maybe June, maybe. But that's just a crazy theory. Not, it's not too crazy actually, <laughs> but it's just a theory. But the actual reason why they got delayed, I have no idea. Maybe it could be they're trying to fix some bugs or they're trying to release the remasters at a better date they don't want to do what the unicorn overlord did or what grand blue fantasy did well grand blue fantasy was released uh in a day before persona 3 reload and the motherfucker still managed to sell 1 million copies so it doesn't always hurt i don't know how many copies unicorn overlord will sell because it's a week apart from final fantasy 7 rebirth but yeah maybe konami is trying to release the suikoden remasters in a moment like at the right moment, right? Oh, uh, right now I have barely any competition. Let's release them right now. Uh, that's what I will do. Thank you guys for your comments. Square. Square. Uh, do you work for Square? Did you talk about that Worms Kotaku? <laughs> Square. I'm so pissed off that they said about Toriyama. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I don't read websites, man. I don't give a fuck about what the big magazines or websites have to say about certain things, to be honest. So I have no idea. But if you want to create some kind of conversation and controversy here, please let us know and enlighten us. Thank you again, Gustavo. Did you have a peak line now that you are getting bigger content creator? Uh, man, you should have at least one. Like, oh, I'm just a writer and I'm also just uh, starting a little channel. I, uh, peak line, like a quote, I have some legendary quotes, if that's what you're asking, like the only in Japan quote, or the let's begin, or the uh, see you next time, or the, um, what else, like, uh, super strongly recommended, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't think I have, like, a proper peak line, like, to start my videos, like, hey guys, what's up, right? I don't know. Is that what you mean? If that's what you mean, that that's your answer. You know, I, ha I do have a, a couple of lines that are like me lines, like memes, like lines that I do. Like the only in Japan is gonna be the most famous one. 
Thank you, Tech F Gaming. I have read that Persona 3 has sold 22.6 million copies in total. Uh, you're probably mistaken, man. Not even Square Enix can sell that much. That's impossible. Maybe, maybe you meant to say 2.6 or 2.26, right? That seems more accurate. But 22 million? <laughs> Not even Final Fantasy sells that much, man. <laughs> Maybe Grand Tourism, Grand Theft Auto. Not even Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> it's a masterpiece. That's another one. Yeah. Yeah, the convoluted, the stupidly convoluted. <laughs> I have several lines. But I don't feel like the convoluted one is uh, like that popular, you know? I, that's something everybody says. But yeah, like the masterpiece one, that's classic, yeah. This game is a masterpiece. <laughs> and the way I say it, right? And I didn't notice until, like, I mean, I, I've been saying that in that connotation, like, for years. Like, instead of saying, I, I believe this game is a masterpiece, you should definitely try it out. No, it's just the way I say it, like, this game is a masterpiece, right? And I'm like, fuck, I cringe. But I, I keep doing that. Oh, the Brutal, the Brutal, um, I have a confession to make, I'm gonna ruin it for you, I'm sorry, but the Brutal was, uh, that I got it, I got that one from uh, James Rolf. He made this video called, uh, about the uh, Chex Quest, I think, and there was a segment where he showed up a cereal, a fake cereal box called Brutal Chex Quest, and the way he said it was like, oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> and that's why I started saying, oh, this game is Brutal! <laughs> Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say that's one of my most famous. Like the masterpiece one, definitely. The one only in Japan. The strongly recommended. <laughs> the the hey, hey guys, what's up? The see you next time. Let's begin. Come on, guys, those are the famous, right? Maybe I should have one, like a like a whole line, not just a few words, like a whole sentence. I should come up with one. Should come up with one, right? Are video games cheaper in Mexico? Mm. Mexico is like um, any other country out there. Some games are cheaper, some games are more expensive, but the new ones are usually more expensive than in the US or in Canada because of taxes, because of importation taxes. So yeah, what's the highest selling RPG series? Uh, I'd say Elder Scrolls and Final Fantasy. Probably, uh, yeah, probably. I'd say maybe, maybe Diablo, no, Mass Effect, I don't think so. I mean, they are huge, right? The Witcher, Dragon Age, but no, yeah, I'd say the Elder Scrolls and Final Fantasy are like the super big selling RPG series. A quick Google search will answer, will easily answer that question, man. See you next time, yeah. So freaking hard, man. Well, the goddamn. I, I always use goddamn in every Q&A, there's the damn this, damn whatever, goddamn this. That's a Q&A thing, not really my videos. It should be, it's so, it used to be, it's so fucking hard, man. But, yeah, you know what happened. Do you like any Western RPGs? I do, I love The Witcher 3, Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning. That was a blast on PS3. Never, I haven't played its remaster. Yeah, so not really a Western RPG fan here, but I, I like some like those. Let's level up. I should start saying let's level up. Here's the top 10. You didn't understand my comment. I said that the Persona franchise has apparently... Oh, yeah, sorry, man. Uh, sorry, the Persona franchise across all games, 22.6 million copies. Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Persona 5 is like 5, 6, 7 million minimum. Including all of its spin-offs, it's probably like half of those numbers. <laughs> Persona. Uh, Grindfest? Grindfest, that's a common word. Everybody uses that term. But I, I do use it a lot to describe games that are like really grindy or you have to like level up a lot it's a freaking grind fest massive grind fest sorry <laughs> probably destroyed your ears yes i'm a fan of xenoblade chronicles i have played it 
how did Tales of click to you? Legendia. I, when I bought my PlayStation 2, my first PlayStation 2, this was, oh man, this was in 2007. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 2007. I bought my PlayStation 2 and um, I got 10 games with it. Of course, bootleg, right? I mean, my PS2 was hacked. So they were pirate, pirated copies. So I got a bunch of games, some RPGs, Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy XII, Resident Evil games, and I got these Tales of Legendia. Like, I was like, what the hell is this? And I got it, and I played and fell in love with it, and I found out it was part of a big series, right? So this is 2007, so imagine. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been a Tales fan for... Wow. 17 years, right? Wow, oh yeah, 17 years. Well, I've been a Tales fan for 17 years. And Legendia was my first. And then I got Fantasia. Fantasia was my second. I loved it. So when I became a Tales fan, those were the only Tales games. Well, well it was on the Nintendo DS, of course, but never came out of Japan. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> I feel old. I've been a fan of... Holy shit. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. A lot of people saying congratulations for 100,000. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. And congratulations to you too. To every single one of you. You made it. You made this possible. Okay, you made this possible, people. So congratulations to you too. And thank you. How many tactics RPGs have multiple characters in one unit like Unicorn Overlord? You got Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen on the Super Nintendo and PS1. You got the other Ogre Battle game, which is called Person of Lordly Caliber on the Nintendo 64. Uh, what else? Like in one, there's gotta be more. I mean, several strategy games are like that, but not RPGs. Uh, Soul Nomad. Soul Nomad and the World Eaters. It's on PS2 and also on Switch and Steam. Soul Nomad, it's definitely like that. You got a bunch of characters in one party, in one group, in small groups. Uh, what else? Others with similar gameplay mechanics, you you only have one character, not one group of characters, and the Grow Lancer series, of course. Same battle mechanics, you just select your character, tell them where to go in a line, and then they just move and attack. It's similar, but it's not like Unicorn Overlord or Ogre Battle. There's gotta be another one, man, I, I can't think of it. Yeah, the only ones I can think of right now that are like that, and there are Japanese RPGs, Ogre Battle and Soul Nomad. Unicorn Overlord Best Vanillaware game? No man. Well, give me some give it some time. It's like the stroke song. Give me some time. I just need a little time. Give me some time with the game. Uh, I can't say it's the best because I I mean I just played it recently, right? Whereas all of the others have been with me for years. I've had those memories for years. So to me, Odin Sphere is still the king of them all. The king by far of every vanilla or game. With Unicorn Overlord, holy shit, man. It's up there. I'm just gonna say that. It's up there. Tales of Arise made me a fan of the Tales series. So you're a new fan. That's the game that's like two and a half years old. Uh, thanks again, Gustavo. At least Atlas gave for free their season pass with Game Pass. No, not that bad, I think. I believe that Atlus and Microsoft are again together against Square Enix. I think that will be a wise strategy. I don't know about that, but I told you the answer will be a DLC. I called it like six months ago. When everybody realized... I made a video. I made a video called the Persona 3 Reload Controversy. And I said in that video, that's like... That's, that's older, you know, it's like seven, eight months ago. And I said... The answer is going to be a DLC. And voila, it happened. Because freaking Atlas. And trust me, in a year or two, Persona 3 Reload Royal Edition. So they can sell the same game to us once again. Well, I don't know if Atlas and Microsoft are against Square Enix, man. That's a really wild theory. I mean, Square Enix is their competition, that's for sure, but saying that they are together against it, that's... that's a stretch. 
What RPGs under 30 hours would you recommend? Oh, Disney fan? You're a fan of Disney? Man, come on. Well, maybe the old Disney, right? When it was good. <laughs> and all the political warfare the uh, company has become nowadays. Anyway, so you want to watch a video I did called Top 50 Short JRPGs. Uh, the best ones out there, in my opinion. I did it recently, about a, a month ago. Uh, look it up. It's kind of long, but it's worth watching. Tons of great recommendations in there. Every single one of them is even below 20 hours. Not even 30. 20 hours. Yeah, the social gato. Uh, yeah, I finally understood your point. You made your point. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it, man. <laughs> I play this every SMT game in chronological order, starting from Digital Devil Saga. Uh, story, am I crazy? Yes, you are. <laughs> no, it's something you wanted to do. Yeah, Digital Devil Story, that's uh, Megami Tensei 1987. Well, if you're into those types of games that are like, really outdated, that's a good thing. I don't think you're crazy, man. You wanted to do that. Sounds cool, actually. And I usually do the same with the Trail series and start with Trails in the Sky, the one game most people don't want to start with. I hope this new SMT5 isn't just some DLC. No, Vengeance is getting a physical release. Confirmed. It's like Royal. It, it's gonna get a physical release, it's not gonna be a DLC. They neutered the dialogue of Persona 3. Uh, there's a lot to say about Persona 3. I'm about to talk about it. Well, maybe in a few weeks. Let, let me digest it first. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'll talk about it, right? There's a lot to say about uh, Persona 3 Reload. I heard Atlus wants to make Persona 6 open world. What would you think of that? Where did you hear that? And I wouldn't be surprised if they did, to be honest. And I think now oh, Terry finally showed up. <laughs> There's Terry. Gaming G. Well, you've been here for a while. Yeah, Gaming G. Uh, I don't know about that open world game. I'm not sure about it. If they do... Well, we'll, we'll just get... Just gonna have to wait and see. I don't think it's a good idea, but if they do, we'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. Uh, Persona games haven't disappointed for the past couple of decades, so I don't know. You don't remember? <laughs> What's disconnected? Oh yeah, Octopath Traveler 2, nothing to do with one. Completely standalone stories. What did Terry say? I think there's so many people playing GRPGs now that they don't need to compete. <laughs> Can't wait for that silver play button on your background in the next Q&A. Ooh, it'll take YouTube a while to send it. Remember, I live in Mexico, so it's gonna take maybe one or two months to arrive, if they send it at all, right? Ooh, last questions, guys. Lost Sphere and I Am Setsuna are 20 hours. Yeah, Lost Sphere is a little bit longer, like 23 maybe. I Am Setsuna is 19, 20, yeah. Those are some solid recommendations for the, the person who was asking, Disney Van. Imagine starting with Dragon Slayer, then working your way through Gagarth Trilogy prior. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a nice thing. Play the Legend of Heroes, every single one of them from start. That's it's not as crazy as this Shin Megami Tensei guy, but yeah, it's crazy nonetheless. That Dragon Slayer came out in 1989, I think. Really old game. And then play the fan translations and then work your way up to Trails into Reverie. That's crazy. But by the time they finish playing all of them, Trails through Daybreak 2 will be out. Will be out. Uh, many old Mega 10 games were reviewed, bombed on Metacritic for reasons like that. I think that not only critic scores are unreliable, but the user scores are as well. Which is exactly why I made the video about the worst GRPs on Metacritic, pretty much to make fun of the website and the scores in there. Nobody should take that website seriously. <laughs> I assumed you're gonna play Dragon's Dogma 2. No, man, not really. I couldn't get into... Well, no, yet I... I I never I played the first one a long time ago and I never went back to it, so I think I gotta play that one first and then play the second one. 
but I, I won't be playing Dragon's Dogma 2, and I won't be covering in this channel. For no reason. That's my only reason. I have nothing against the game. I'd like to play it. What's your favorite game ever? This. This is my favorite game ever. That is my favorite game ever. Trails needs to get its shit together and finish its story. <laughs> I figured Trails through Daybreak are gonna be the, the last ones. I mean, it kinda ended on Reverie. Trails through Daybreak is gonna like different part of the world, different characters and, sh and stuff like that, you know, but they're still gonna be slightly connected to uh, all the other games, the older games. So yeah. And I heard some news, and we talked about this in a previous q and I remember, that apparently there's not going to be a Trails Through Daybreak 3. That there's going to be a brand new saga that's not connected at all to any of the Trails games. So they're doing it, man. They are getting their shit together, as you say. <laughs> Least favorite game ever? What? Like, least favorite, but... You mean like the worst game ever? I don't know. I think the one that I hate the most is probably Time and Eternity. <laughs> oh man. Tracy on the Sega Genesis is another one. Holy crap. Um, but they're fun to pick on. Maybe Tokyo Mirage Sessions. That's That hurts, man. That game hurts. Final Fantasy X 2 also is like... Mm, holy crap. I don't know, most gacha games out there, most most gacha RPGs. <laughs> oh man, have you played the Shin Megami Tensei Synchronicity Prologue? No. <laughs> I don't know what that is, man, but no. <laughs> Cross Cross is the worst. <laughs> it's bad. I've been lying to you guys. I've been only covering games that are not worth it. The best ones out there, Time and Eternity, Tracia, Draken, Omega Quintet, Make You Labyrinth, Natural Doctrine, Shining Soul, Valhalla Knights, Quest 64. That's gold right there, man! Go play those instead! Anyway, guys, there's not gonna be any clips out of this stream. I'm gonna leave this stream public because it is my 100,000 subscribers celebration. And I just want you to know that I really appreciate you guys joining today, coming here, stopping to say hello. Most of the usual suspects showed up. Elliot finally showed up. Elliot Wilderman. Oh, man. <laughs> Terry took you forever, man. And, yeah. Thanks a bunch for showing up. Um, that's it. Not much left to say that than what I already said at the beginning of the stream. Uh, it's a milestone that we achieved together. Don't forget that I'm not being cheesy or anything like seriously You know, I've been bitching about my YouTube situation for the past couple of years. So It is just a big of, a, of an achievement to me as it is to you. Well, it's bigger for me, of course <laughs> But it is for you too. I mean you should be like Congratulations to you too because you help this this channel is about all of us Which is why I do these Q&A's every Sunday uh, yeah, thank you guys for being a fan. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for supporting this channel and Not hating I gotta go now uh, Thank you for rejoining bring back floppy dogs. Whatever the hell that means <laughs> uh, well, Yeah, uh, thanks a bunch everybody and I'll see you next time 100,000 subscribers Fuck yeah